Okay, so we're now on to the final part of Ho Ho Ho, which is the border for the blanket. If you're making the um, placemats, we were just fraying the fringes so you didn't need to worry. You can add the border to it if you want, and if so, obviously this is the way you'll do it. So before we begin, we just need to make doubly sure all these ends here are really, really secure. Um, to be honest, with an acrylic yarn, if you've like pulled each, each um, end nice and tight, it should be pretty secure anyway and they shouldn't really come undone but just to make completely sure that nothing's going to come unraveled inside your border what I like to do is to just tie all of these together before we start the actual border tie these ends together in pairs like so just to make completely sure they're not going to come unraveled when it's washed and things so it shouldn't really happen but okay so just go around the edge of your blanket like so, tying your ends together in pairs. And when you've done all of them, and it will take you a little while because there's quite a few, what we just need to do is now trim them a bit. Now don't trim them too short because if you trim them right close to the um, knot, there is obviously a risk. If you, if you trim them too close right now, so there is obviously a risk that they could come undone. So what I usually do is cut them to around about sort of two centimeters, just under an inch. So like so. Okay. So just carry on along, do all of that, and then come back and we will get started on actually doing the border. Okay. So once you've now got all your little ends tidied up like so, time to actually start on the border. Now, so the first thing to tell you is the hook. Now, the pattern is written for mainly using a four millimeter hook. Um, you may have noticed though that I've actually been using a 3.75 millimeter hook for my blanket. That's just because over time I, I've noticed my tension's got a little bit looser. Um, probably because I'm more relaxed with doing the um, mosaic crochet now. So I am now using a 3.75 mil. So for the purpose of the border, I've dropped that down to a 3.25. So you'll usually need just a slightly smaller hook for your border just to give it that sort of firmer edge. Um, personal taste, everybody crochets differently. So you'll probably know, know from experience um, which hook size suits you better for the border but I say for me I usually go down half a half a millimeter from what I've used on the blanket so that's what I've got here I've also got some markers we are going to need a marker for each corner chain we're only working one chain in the corners and they can be a little bit tricky to find if you don't mark them so as soon as you've made them just pop a marker in and you'll know exactly where your corners are then and this other one is for our slip stitch at the end the joining slip stitch to mark that. I'll explain it all more as we go through. So anyway, to get started, we've got the right side of our blanket facing us. It doesn't actually really matter which corner you're starting, but for the purpose of making the instructions make sense, we need to have one where we're going to have um, the edges, a corner where we're going to have our sort of four edges first thing we work on so that's why I've told you to basically start in this chain if you can see there right at the end of that last row of the blanket okay so that's where we're going to start we we'll start there with a standing double crochet now because I'm working in the round I don't usually start my standing stitches with a slip knot on the hook it's just personal taste it's up to you you won't start with a slip knot if you wish um, but I am just going to wrap the yarn around my hook like so but not pull it through as you normally would for a slip, for a slip knot I'm just going to leave it like so and then we're going to start as I said in this very last chain on this top row of the blanket with one double crochet then we work a chain and another double crochet in the same place now make sure you're only in that working into that front loop because we're going to need the back loops when we do the next border okay so as I said we're going to mark this chain because already you can see it's quite difficult to see which one's a stitch and which ones are the chain but if you now 
pop that marker and if you pop it into the front loop that'll just make things easier when you come to the next row but whatever way you do it mark that corner okay and now all we're going to do we're going to work our way down this edge so just into this again into just into this front loop of the chain so the chain spaces that you left along the edge when you're making your blanket this is what they're for okay so just insert your hook into that front loop like so and it's as easy as that to get started on our border okay so work your way down the edge of the blanket like so so just inserting your hook into that front loop of all of these chains so carry on like that and when you get to the next corner come back and I'll tell you what you do then okay so I'm now almost to the end of this first edge just got another couple of rows to pick up the stitches on so I'll just finish those off there so we're now right down to the very bottom edge of the blanket so here we have this first chain you see there which is actually the last chain when you made your foundation row but basically we're right on this miss chain here and we're now going to do the corner just the same as we did at the start where you see I'm just gonna into that front loop one double crochet one chain one double crochet remembering to pop a marker just in the front loop of that chain again like so and now all we're going to do along this bottom edge is just work double crochets just into the front loops here of this very bottom chain okay make sure you don't work into the back loops as well so don't do that like you normally would because you then won't have a you see you need the loops there when we do the back border we're going to be working into the other loops so make sure you're just working into that front loop so again do that all the way along and I'll see you at the next corner okay so I've now got to the next corner so right to the very end or indeed the start <laughs> of that first row so we've now got as you can see the very last chain so as we have been doing we're going to be doing our one double crochet one chain one double crochet into there and then popping a marker into that chain and now we're going to go up the other side of the blanket now this way the stitches might look slightly different um, but they're still there it's just a case of as you can see if you find it difficult to see the chains when you're working at all just give it a stretch and you should see hopefully where that space is so it's just a case of as we did before just into that front loop work double crochets all the way along the edge okay so that one's a little bit tighter but you can still see where that chain is Right, so I'm now to the got up to the last corner. We've got to work on this round. So again, it is just in case I stretch that out. Whoop. So you can see that last chain, and then one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet in there. Not forgetting to mark that chain, and then just like we did along the bottom edge when we were doing it we're just going to work now our final row into these front loops so that's the front loops and the last row of the blanket okay so just work in there all the way along and i will see you when we get to the end of the round which is indeed the start of the round okay don't actually 
join up yet because I just want to explain one more little thing to you when you get to the end so just carry on until you get to the very last stitch along here and I'll see you then right so I've now just done that very last stitch along that top edge of the blanket there so now what we need to do is we need to join up with the first one so we're just going to do a slip stitch into our standing double crochet there now you don't want to pull this slip stitch too tight because we're actually going to be working the last stitch of our next round into that slip stitch and that is what this little um this extra mark has been for that you've probably seen sitting there all this time so what i'm going to do is mark that that way we'll know exactly where our last stitch of the round is going to go a little bit there so i've placed a marker in there if i can get it to do up right now i'm just going to pull that loop up take my hook out because before we can do the next row we need to place some more markers so you can see i've got yeah a different color of marker there and what that is for is to show us where our um holly berries are going to be on the next round so what we need to do is mark the fifth stitch before our corner chains so for this this is the most complicated corner so i'll show you this first so this is our corner chain this is going to be where our first stitch before that corner chain is so that's our second third fourth fifth stitch okay so place a marker in there okay so what you'll have is four clear stitches between your corner marker and your new marker that we've just marked there for the the holly berries so obviously because we've got this extra marker here for our um marking our slip stitch which is our last stitch of the round that's why we've only got three that you can see there so that's four clear stitches between this marker and this one so you now need to just go around all the other corners and do the same thing so if we go back whoops to this end of the row it'll be a little bit clearer to show you what i mean on all the others so this is our corner chain so first second third fourth this is the fifth stitch before that chain okay so mark that and you can see here we have got a nice clear one two three four stitches between the two so just go around and do that on every corner and then we'll come back and we'll get started on round two okay so we've now got our little stitches marked and the fifth stitch before each of the corner chains and it's now time to join a new colour now we're going to be using our main colour um, again in the, the round after this we're going to not going to cut that we're just going to leave it there and then to pick up the new one just grab it leave a tail of at least sort of four or five inches again sort of 10 to 15 centimeters maybe and then we're just going to pull that loop through there if you pull that down that closes that chain up okay so now again make sure you don't leave this tail too short so I keep hold of that I'm going to do one chain okay just pull where are we <laughs> find the pull that down again where is it there it is to tighten that up so we've now got basically this is our turning chain so that doesn't count as a stitch it's just there to bring our hook up to the right height so now we're going to work our corner so into this marked chain into just the back loop we're going to do one double crochet one chain one double crochet so the corners are exactly the same as they were on round one so what we're now going to do is take this marker out of there and pop it in the corner chain there so again we're always marking our corner chains right so now we're going to turn and work down this side again so to do that we've got, we've got to work one back loop double crochet and now we're creating our holly berries just like we did um when we were actually making the holly back where are we back here so we did those little sort of mini puff stitches didn't we just like santa's nose and the 
and Robin's eyes as well. So I'm just going to do that in the next stitch. So that's yarn over, insert hook, and then we just pull up one, yarn over, two, yarn over, three stitches, and then we're going to yarn over and pull through all seven loops. So there we are, puff just as we've been doing before. And then you've got to do that again. So one back loop double crochet and now another puff. One, two, three, and three. So now all we're going to do along this edge is do back loop double crochets all the way along until we get to our marked stitch near the end. Okay, so carry on with your back loop double crochets along here and I will see you when you get to that next marked stitch. Right, so I've now got up to my marked stitch. So what we're going to do, we're just going to actually do another back loop double crochet into that marked stitch. Okay, then it's, we're doing puffs again, so it's one puff in there, one, two, three, pull through, and then we've got one double crochet. I'm going to repeat that again. So it's another puff, one, two, three, and one back loop double crochet, which takes us nicely to our marked corner chain. And then as we do in every corner, we're going to work into that back loop of that chain with one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet. And I'm just going to move that marker up to that chain there. Okay, so now we're starting again. So we start with one back loop double crochet one puff, one, two, three, do that again, one back loop double crochet, one puff, one, two, three. And so every corner is going to be the same. I'm going to do that little sort of set of puffs on either side, <coughs> excuse me, of our corner chain. So now it's just a case of back loop double crochets all the way along to the next marker. So you can just carry on, complete the round like so, remembering that when you get to your marked stitch you work a back loop double crochet into that and then you start your little puff double crochet, puff double crochet, little design in the corner. Now as with the blanket you can't really see the puffs very well like so, but when we do the next round we're going to be working our little um, front post stitch around each puff and that will really help to bring it forward so they look more like berries. So yeah carry on and I will see you when you get to the end of the round which was obviously also the beginning of the round. Okay Okay, so I've now just got to my last marked stitch, you know, the, well, I've got more marks here, but the last of these sort of blue markers that I've put in to, mark, to, to help me with where to place my puffs. So I've just got the last one of those and so I'm going to work back loop double crochet into that and then as we've been doing all along we've got our puff there, one double crochet, another puff and then as I think I said before our very last double crochet of the row is going to go into that marked slip stitch from the previous round. Okay, I'll take that marker out actually. Easier to show you. So now I'm going to work that last back loop double crochet into there. Okay, so we've now got to the end of the round. So what we need to do is now slip stitch. So remember this is our our sort of turning chain, this first red stitch here, so we can ignore that. We just need to slip stitch into there. And again, remember not to pull that too tight. And again, we're going to pop our marker in there. 
Okay, now actually talking about markers and moving them up, you notice I didn't move this one up. And I haven't actually on all the others. I should have probably mentioned this before. You can actually leave that one where it is on this round because when we now come back on this round we're about to start, we'll actually be working into here. So if you moved it up, it doesn't matter. You'll just have to like work into the loop below your mark stitch then, but you can just work into there like that. We'll move it up after the next round. Right, so I've now got to the end of there and that is actually my CC1 finished for this part of the border. So we're going to chop that off, leaving about sort of six inches or something, just so we can like weave that in comfortably at the end. So now we need to, if you remember, we left our main colour attached. So you now need to pick that up again. And we're going to pick that up exactly the same way as we picked up our new colour before. We're just going to pull that through that loop and then pull this end down. And what we can do, actually, I'm just going to work over this end for the first couple of stitches. You'll still want to weave it in properly but that will just hold it nice and secure while we're actually working on the blanket okay so we've done that so we now got our turning chain again and again we are going to be starting in this marked you can see get that mark a bit out of the way in the back loop of that marked stitch and I, like i said i'm just going to work over that tail I'm just going to do all standard one double crochet one chain one double crochet that we've been doing all the way along okay so now i'm gonna move this one up into that chain again okay right so we've got one back loop double crochet which is now going to be worked basically into the double crochet we worked into the corner on the previous round and now we've just got a little bit here we've got front loop treble on the next stitch and this is going to like frame the first holly berry or we'll start of the frame for it and then as we've done before with all of the puffs to help them just pop forward we're just going to insert our hook around the post of the stitch like so and work our double crochet there and that just helps to pull that forward then we've got another front loop treble there okay then we've got to work our front post stitch around the next puff then one more front loop treble okay see it's now like framed the little berries there and now we're just going to work a whole row of back loop double crochets right until we get to the next marker again okay so just carry along along this edge with your back loop double crochets and I'll see you when you get to the next marker okay so I've just now got to the next marked stitch which as you can see I left down there so what we are going to do we're going to be working a front post a front loop treble into that marked stitch okay now we can actually move that up put it in there okay so now as we did before we've now come up to a puff so it's a front post double crochet around that then a front loop treble down there and another front post stitch And then front loop treble. Okay. So then we've got one back loop double crochet there before we get to our corner mark stitch. And as always, well actually not always, I think that will be slightly different soon, but on this round anyway, as always, it's one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet and move this corner marker up into that chain so now we start again on the next edge with one back loop double crochet then one front loop treble then we've got our front post double crochet there 
and then our front loop treble then another front post stitch around that puff and a front loop treble down there and now it's just a case of working back loop double crochets all the way along to the next marker again so you can just carry on and repeat that around there we are so your corners should all look like so and i'll see you when you get back to that very last blue marker again just before the end of this round okay so i've now almost finished round three so i'm just going to do this last little pattern bit in the corner starting with front loop treble in that marked stitch and front post double crochet around that puff let's remember to just move our marker up okay so then we've got one more front loop treble and a front post double crochet and then we end the round with a front loop treble in there and as before we've got i'll take that marker out we've got to do our last back loop double crochet into that marked slip stitch okay so now as before we're just going to join up with a slip stitch into our first double crochet there in the corner so that's the one right next to our marked corner chain remembering as always not to pull that too tight and to pop our marker back in it so we know where that last stitch has got to go okay so now it's time to change colors again so we're going to drop our main color pick up our cc2 so this is for the holly leaves so as we did with um, CC1 when we did the berry round, we're just going to leave a tail at least sort of 10 to 15 centimetres there, pull that loop through, pull that one down to hold it tight. And then what I'm going to do, I'll probably just work over this tail again with the first couple of stitches in the corner here just to hold that in place. So we have our turning chain, again, pull that down. You then lose that loop in the main colour. So now we're going to work into the back loop of our marked corner chain again. Just try and get it so you can see there. There we go. And like I said, I'm just going to work over that tail. It'll still need um, weaving in properly at the end, but that'll just hold it secure while we're working. Chain and another double crochet. Okay, so again, move that marker up into that chain we've just done. And this is a really really easy round you're basically just working back loop double crochets all the way around okay actually that turned out quite loose that one it's a good idea to try and keep your um, top loops not too big nice and even and say not too big because then if you're working into that stops stop, sometimes if you make your loops quite big then you can get um, these sort of gaps showing there when you work your travels into them so if you just keep try to keep your loops nice and even okay so as I said we are just going to be doing back loop double crochets all the way around so you can just go ahead and do that remembering to work one double crochet one chain one double crochet into each of the marked corner chains into the back loop of them and remembering to move that chain that, that marker up into the chain on the new round as you get there okay so i'm now just about at the end of round four of my border and I've just now got to work this mark last stitch into this marked slip stitch so we'll just do that now okay 
and then as always we're going to just join the slip stitch in there remembering not to pull it too tight and I'll pop that marker back in so that's round four done so now what we need to do is to um, move on these markers move them a little bit further away from the corner so we can now see where our leaves are going to start so what we need to do I'm going to undo that I'm not going to take it out just yet so we can count so we now need to move it another five stitch stitches further away from the corner so that's one two three four this one is the fifth one so put that in there so to check we've done that right you should now have 12 clear stitches between this marker and the one in your corner chain okay so we have got two four six eight ten eleven and this one i just marked this slip stitch is the 12th one so we know we've done that right oh that loop a bit bigger so we don't lose that so now you just need to go all the way around your blanket and do the same for the other three corners so if we got here i now need to leave it in while we're counting move it another five away so one two three four and this will be our fifth one and then double check that you've got your 12 stitches between the two markers two four six eight ten twelve perfect right so now we are going to be ready to start round five right so i'm back to that corner where all of the magic happens and we're um swapping colors and everything so i'm back there now where we ready to start round five so to do that, as we've been doing on the previous rounds, we're now going to need to, we don't want to cut our CC2. <laughs> we don't want to cut our CC2 because we're going to be using it again in a moment. So we're just going to leave that attached, just drop it there at the back, and we're going to pick up our main colour there. Okay, and pull that down again to lock it in. So turning chain. The corner is just the same as it has been here. So we're doing our one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet into that marked chain. Then we've got to remember to move that marker up to the chain we just did. Okay. So now we're going to do things slightly differently because we want to create our um holly leaf going diagonally up the corner we're going to actually have to work into the start working into the corner chains from two rows below so that's why we make sure we we don't work in work into the space we work into that back loop of the corner chains because we're going to need that front loop now so we now start this round if you can see with there's the corner chain there if you can see from round three so we are gonna on the other corners it's slightly easier to see because we haven't where we haven't um changed colors but we're now just going to and if it is quite small like mine is just remember you've got an actual hook so you can put the hook like so there we go and we've now in that front loop of the chain and we're working our front loop treble there and what we'll do when we get to the end, our last stitch of the round isn't actually going to be into this marked slip stitch this time. It will be back into that exact same chain we just worked there. Okay, so that's the start of that round. So now we need three back loop double crochets. So what you need to do is make sure you're in the right place. And it can be a little bit tricky when you've worked in at the corner there. So we know we've got to miss one. So then we can do our three back loop double crochets there. Okay, so that third double crochet should line up with this here, with this um, treble that we did for on round three there. Okay, so we've now got three front loop trebles. One, two, 
three. And then another three back loop double crochets. One, two, three. Okay, so now all we're going to do now is a lot of trebles on this round because we are now going to be doing front loop trebles all the way to the next marker. Okay, so just all the way along. So we're going to cover up most of our green line that we've got here with trebles. So just carry on like so and I'll meet you at the next marker. Right, so I've now got up to this next marker. Um, just going to be working, still another front loop treble, so we're going to work in front of that there. Okay, so that's our marked stitch. Now what we need to do is make sure we continue to mark this stitch. Okay. So now that we've done that, we've now got another two front loop trebles. Oh, if I can crochet today, one, oh, two. Okay, so now we've got three back loop double crochets, two, three, then three front loop trebles, one, oh, what is wrong with me today? One, two, three, three more back loop double crochets, one, two, get all the loops, three. Now, we've got to now, we're now working into this corner chain again. So we've got one front loop treble into there. So as always, we're going to be missing that stitch behind there. And now we've got our standard one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet into that marked corner chain. So we're now going to take that marker ooh, out and put it in the chain up there. And now turn around and we're now going to be working the next front loop treble again into this same corner chain as there. Okay. So now we have got three back loop double crochet. So we're back where we sort of started on the, the previous side. So that last double crochet lines up with this treble there. And we've got three front loop trebles, two, three, three back loop double crochets, and then we're going to start again with another run of trebles right up until we get to that next marker. So you can repeat that for the next couple of corners so carry on along say doing your trebles front loop trebles all the way along to the next marker and then do the same there and basically carry on around oh, and I will see you when you get back to the beginning of the row round sort of the end of this round and we'll then do round six together all right so I've now got to the last corner um, basically the first corner as well of round five so we'll just go through that together again so as we have been all the way around we are now going to be working front loop treble basically in front of our mark stitch there and then moving that marker up a row then we've got two more front loop trebles Then the three back loop double crochets, two, three, three front loop trebles, three, 
three back loop doubles and now we come to the last stitch of our round which is marked but we're not actually going to be working into that because we just need if I take that out you can see we just need to basically finish our corner off so our final stitch this time is basically worked in front of that marked stitch into exactly the same corner chain we did our very first stitch well after the corner of the first stitch there okay so that is now that completed so now we can do as we always do and slip stitch into our very first double crochet there from the corner and pop that marker back in there again okay so yet again we're going to drop our main color we're going to pick up our cc3 and just pull that loop through there so exactly the same where are i just pull that down exactly the same as we've been doing on the previous rounds so now you've got your one chain turning chain now round six is slightly different because we want to be now making our holly leaves we're going to be making them up the corner so this time we're not going to work into this chain we're actually going to work into the chain corner chain from the row down yeah so from round four so a little ferret around there there we go find that so so what we're doing we've only done one front loop treble there because when we finish it we're going to work our last front loop treble in that same place again so don't forget when you get round right the way to the beginning you, you've still got to complete that corner so that's the start then we've got one chain and then two more front loop trebles in there so we're still only gaining we're still only gaining um, one stitch on each side of that chain as we have been before because we're going to be missing the double crochet chain double crochet from the corner okay where normally we would work into that and increase in that corner chain so hopefully that makes sense so I'm going to take this out of here and pop it into our chain there okay so now as we come around the corner our next stitch is going to be a back loop double crochet into that treble there okay so now we've got three front loop trebles so we're basically going to be filling in these little green spaces we had there so three front loop trebles that's the start of our next holly leaf three back loop double crochets and another three front loop trebles two three all right so now all we're going to do now is do a whole row of back loop double crochets so we can do along here back loop double crochets until we get to the next marker again so i'll meet you when you get there just show you that okay so i'll meet you at the next marker okay so i've now just got up to that next marker um what we can actually do we can actually leave this marker in a little bit like we did uh, a couple of rows ago um because we're going to be working on the next round we're going to be working our treble into that actual stitch okay so we'll leave that there anyway but now we're up to the marker we've got to work another back loop double crochet into that and then we've got two more back loop double crochets nothing else you can do because of the trebles below okay then three front loop trebles two three three back loop double crochets and three front loop trebles 
Okay. So now we've got to start on our little holly leaf in the corner again. So what we do now, you've got to, sorry, run back, lift up and crochet first. Okay. Then we've got one front loop treble just into sort of dig around, find that chain there, into that, there we go, into that chain from round four. I'm just going to do that. So that is the end of our first repeat, if you like, which is this whole side. So now we start again as we did right at the beginning with another, we now need a front loop treble in that same chain again. Okay. Then we've got our corner chain. So what we can do is now take a marker out there and pop that in there. Okay, so we've marked our corner chain again. And now we're going to go around and put another two trebles in that same chain again from round four. So one, two. Okay, so what we've done there, we basically bypassed our double crochet chain, double crochet that we did on round five. And they're taken in there. And then we've got the extra one. So we've still only effectively gained one stitch on each side of the chain. Okay, even though we've worked two into there. Because we're now our next stitch straight into this. So back loop double crochet straight into that treble there from round five. Okay, so now start again on this side with three front loop trebles. three back loop doubles and obviously there three front loop trebles so that's the first half of our holly leaves done there okay so every corner will be the same so you can just carry on and do that for the next couple of corners so we will now be going to be doing our back loop double crochets all the way to the next marker and then start again like we did here around the next two corners and if you get up to the sort of final marker right the, near the end of the row the round um, and then I'll just take you through that last little bit again right so I'm almost to the end of round six so just as we've been doing all the way along I'm gonna work back loop double crochet into that marked stitch and then two more and we're going to just do our three front loop trebles. Two, three, three back loop doubles, and three more front loop trebles. Two, three. Oh, hold on. and then we've got a back loop double crochet in that last treble there so now as we um, as we did before we're not actually physically going to be working into our slip stitch now we're going to actually complete our round by completing this corner here so remember on the other corners we've had two trebles one chain two trebles so we just now want to complete that by putting our final treble just at the start there. This is all to just basically keep our keep our um, join right in the corner. Just makes it neater, I think. Okay. So now, as usual, we're going to join with a slip stitch in our first stitch, which is this treble here. Okay. Oh, get my hook in. Slip stitch. Don't pull it too tight and pop a marker in it. Right, so now we're ready to start round seven. So uh, we're still going to keep our CC2 colour attached here because we're going to do one more round in that colour. So we'll leave that attached. And now we've got to pick up our MC again. 
same as we've been doing on every round just going to pull that loop through there tighten that down do our turning chain okay so now we're back to working into our corner change from the previous round so we've got our standard one double crochet one chain one double crochet I'm just going to move that marker up into there. No, oh, close. Okay. So now we have got two back loop double crochets. And now we've got we've got little square brackets in our written instructions. So that tells us we've got to do what's in them twice. And what's in the brackets is one front loop treble and then five back loop double crochets so whoops one two three four five then one front loop treble and five back loop doubles again two three, four, five, then we've got one more front loop treble there and now we're going to leave a, a green stripe down the middle of our border on each edge so what we're now going to do is just we're going to work back loop double crochets all the way to the next marker okay so just carry on and do that and I will see you at the next marker Okay, so I've now got round to my next marker. So, as I'm sort of, I think I mentioned on the previous round, what we're now going to be doing is working a front loop treble in there. So, if you moved your marker up, that's fine. Just do it into the loop below the stitch your marker is in. Okay, so there's our treble there. And now we are going to move that marker up. Okay. Then we have got five back loop double crochets four five one front loop treble so we're going to do that twice Oops. Ah. one two three four five and one Then we've got two back loop double crochets and then we've got to our little working into our corner chain there so that's one double crochet one chain one double crochet move the marker up and now turn around the corner two back loop double crochets one front loop treble then five back loop double crochets three four five and do that twice so one front loop treble and five back loop doubles again two, three, four, five, then one front loop treble and now we're going to just do our back loop double crochets right until we get to the next the next marker again. Okay so as I say every corner is the same so if you know go and do the next two corners yourself and I'll see you once again when we get to that very last um, blue marker just before the end of the round. Right, now just got to the last few stitches of round seven again and our final blue marker of the round. So as we have been all the way around, we're just going to complete it, complete this round with one treble in that marker, then five 
Make loop double crochets. And one treble. And five more back loop double crochets. Five, one treble, treble, <laughs> then we've got one back loop double crochet and we're back to, we're going to, I'm going to actually work into our marked stitch again, so move that marker there just to make it easier, back loop double crochet into there, and now we're going to join up to our first double crochet again and pop that marker back into that slip stitch. Right, so we've just got now two more rounds to do and we'll have completed the border. So we're now going to finish off our holly leaves on this next round, on round eight. So I'm going to pick up. Still going to leave our main colour attached because we're going to need that for the final round. Pick up our CC2, one chain. So now we're back to doing like we did down here. We're going to be working, we're not going to be working into that marked stitch, but actually going to be working, marked chain rather, we're going to be working into that chain below. So we I suppose we could have actually left our marker in there last time. Okay, so remember. We're not going to do the two trebles at the start of the round because it's nice to just keep our, our like joining when we do the next round right in the very corner. So it's one treble, one chain, two trebles all in that round six chain. So now remove that marker and just pop it in that chain. Okay. So now, as we did before, we're skipping this corner here, the that where the marked chain was, the double crochet, chain, double crochet, and we're now going to do. Where are we? I was in most place now. Right, we need five back loop double crochets. So that's going to start in this one here. Okay, one. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Then we've got three front loop trebles. One, two, three. Then three back loop double crochets. Two. Three and three front loop trebles again. Okay. So now it's just a case back loop double crochets all the way to the next marker again. So I think you should probably be okay to actually complete this whole round yourself now. You should be familiar with the way the corners work. And I will see you basically ready to start round nine. Right, so I'm now back to this last little blue marker here for round eight. So I'm just gonna finish off the round with a back loop double crochet into that marked stitch. Then it's three front loop trebles. One, two, three, three back loop doubles, two, three, and then three doubles again, three, and three more doubles. Actually, that's five doubles. <laughs> Three, four, five. And again, because we've been working into this um, 
the corner chain from two rows below we're not going to be working actually right into that marked stitch we're going to be working our last stitch into this the first chain there there to complete that corner that we did at the start okay so insert the hook there one treble and now we can finish up all around by putting a slip stitch there in that first treble and again mark that slip stitch okay so we have now finished with our cc2 color so we can chop that off leave about sort of six inches or sort of 15 centimeters there so you can weave that in at the end so now for the last round of border one we're going to pick up our main color for the last time so just pull that tight again do our chain and what i'll just do as well when we now do this first couple of stitches i'm just gonna work over that end just to hold it sort of secure for now but you will still need to weave it in okay so we've got our marked corner chain so we're going to start with one double crochet one chain oops one double crochet and then move that marker up to that chain still you'll want to leave that in there even when we've completed the round because you'll need to know exactly where the corner chains are when we want to join the two borders together okay so that's all that first corner done so now we have got two back loop double crochets and two i'm just going to pull that end in that's that's nice and secure now and now five front loop trebles so this is basically what we're doing on this round as it's going to be mainly front loop trebles apart from where you can't actually do a front loop treble which i'll explain very shortly okay so obviously we can't do a front loop treble here because we've got the trebles on the previous row so just on the top of sort of these um the holly leaves we're just going to do our back loop double crochets but other than that it's trebles all the way around apart from obviously in the corner as well we've got the one double crochet one chain one double crochet okay one two three back loop double crochets and then all the way along here it's going to be ooh, front loop trebles okay so carry on around like so and I'll just come back at the end of the round again just to show you how to sort of fasten off and everything at the end right so I've now got to the last little bit of the final round of border one so we'll just go through that together so just as you've been doing for her, this sort of the end of each side you start on there obviously with your front loop treble in that marked stitch three oh, don't pick up the wrong bit of the yarn three back loop double crochets three front loop trebles Three back loop doubles again, two, three, then five front loop trebles, one, two, three, four, five, then we've got back loop double crochet and then our final stitch of the round is going to be into this marked stitch so I'm going to take the marker out do my final whoops, double crochet in there and now I'm not actually going to join with a slip stitch as this is our last round to make it neater and also to make it easier to sort of see the loops um, or, and or like the nut where the stitches are when you come to do the joining round we're going to actually do an invisible join so to do that, cut your yarn, about six inches, give or take, okay, and then just pull that loop 
through there so you've just got that one strand of yarn sticking out of that last stitch we did then thread the end onto a tapestry needle and what we're going to do we're not gonna if we were doing a slip stitch we would have put our hook in here okay to do it but if we do that we're going to actually create an extra stitch so what you need to do with an invisible join to make it truly invisible and not gain any stitches is actually insert your needle into the next stitch. So for us, that's, be, that's going to be right where our marked chain is. Okay, so like so, because what we're going to do is replace this loop with a new one. So pull that through like so. Don't pull it too tight because the idea is to leave our, our new manufactured top loop looking just like all of the others. So I've done that and what we've now got to do is just insert our needle back through where the yarn came out and if you just go down and pick up that la that back bump too okay just pull that down like so and like I said just pull it tight enough so it looks like all the other loops there we go and it's totally disappeared okay so now all you've got to do is gently weave the ends in so like so and actually to get it away from the edge we've got plenty of room down here okay I'm just gonna come down this way make sure you don't pull any of this too tight because we don't want anything to pucker up and we don't want to lose this nice new top loop we've created okay so we'll go down that way And then back again the other way and we should be pretty secure there okay don't need to chop it off too closely because it's all going to be hidden inside the border so now just go through with your other ends here all of these ends here they all need to be woven in and let's say just trimmed off like that so then you can do that we can then we need to leave these need to leave these corner markers in because we're going to need them when we join the two borders together to know exactly where our corner chains are again but the ones that you are using for the rest of it like these you can take them out now let's go around and do that and i will see you to start border two right so for border two we aren't going to be worrying about putting our holly leaves or anything on this it's all just going to be rounds of plain back loop double crochets so just like we did really right at the beginning um, on our first round and, uh, and then we're just going to be working into the, back, into the back loops of the stitches all the way around. So what you're going to do this, I haven't got a specific pattern set up, you just basically look at whatever you've got left over and you can, if you've got enough of any one colour, just obviously then you can you can do the whole thing in one colour if you want or make it stripy. I, I kind of like the idea of stripes so it's just up to you, go with it with whatever colours you've got left um, to design there now you can actually start in any corner you like um, I say in the pattern to start in the sort of like we did on the on border one I said to start in the final chain of the sort of top row of the blanket now that will be I'm saying that for, as you're actually looking at it now we're on the wrong side um, technically it would have been the first chain that you made when you were working on the right hand side but basically it doesn't matter what corner you start in. I just do that so we can we're going to start the instructions with the the little chains that go down the side again that's the only thing we can start in any corner you like in one of those corner chains so I'm going to make my first round at least in the um in the main color so we'll start just like we did this is all going to be just how we started border one so there's uh, we're going to start with a standing double crochet and because we're going to be joining it in the round i haven't put a slip knot on my hook so i've just got just twisted that yarn around there just like i did on border one and we're going to start you can see there hopefully where we've got this chain at the end so we're going to work just as we did before one double crochet one chain one double crochet in there and we're going to pick up our marker pop in the corner like so so we know where our corner stitch is and then just as we did on the right side it's going to go down the edge 
working a double crochet into every chain. It can be slightly more difficult to see the chains on this side because of, we've obviously already got the stitches. There we go on the other side. But if you give it a little stretch, hopefully you can see. There we go. That's where our first stitch will go. So just carry on along. Again, if you can't see it, give it a little pull out. There we go. And you'll find your chain. You soon get into the flow of it. Like so. So carry on along like that, doing your double crochets all the way down. And I will see you when you get to the, the, bo the bottom edge of your blanket. Right, I've just now got down to the end of this stage. I've just got a couple more, um, or like one more stitch really, to just pick up along the side, which is there. Get my hook in it. And now we're at the next corner again. So we're going to... You can actually go into both loops there of that chain that you haven't used if you want. Make it a little bit more secure. So as we do with all the corners, it'll be one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet in there. Remembering, of course, to pop our marker in that chain. Okay. Oh, get in there. So now, like we did before, we've, we've only got one loop left to work into now along this bottom edge. So we are just going to do that. So you'll work all the way along here, just doing double crochets into these re remaining loops of this bottom chain. Okay, so this is why we had to work into our... Um, into the back bump of the chain to start with because we needed these two other loops left to start off our border so you can carry on around now like so so when you get to the top you will be working into the that remaining loop there as well and then up the other side obviously you'll do just like we did here where you just work into the chain so go all the way around like so remembering to pop your marker in the corner chains and i will see you when you get back to the beginning of this round again Right, so I've now got back to the beginning again for round one. Now, before we carry on, I should have probably mentioned uh, to help you kind of work out how you want to do your stripes and things and how much yarn you need. You're going to need probably 11 or 12 grams of yarn for each round like because it's just plain um, back loop double crochet. So make sure you've got at least that much left of whichever colour you want to do so you know where you start. And it's also, I think, quite nice to have an idea of where you're going with the colours before you get started. So what I'm going to, what I've decided I want to do for my border on this blanket is I'm going to, because we're going to need nine rounds in total, because we did nine rounds for our front border. So you need exactly the same number of rounds. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make, the joining round is going to be the French navy I've got here, the CC3 colour. So I'd also like to make, I think, my last round of this back border that colour too. So that's going to be round, round nine. Then I think I'm going to do a round of the um, main colour, which will be round eight. So round seven, I'm then going to do the green. Round six will be cream again. Round five will be the red. So that means I need four more plain rounds of cream before then. So that's what I'm now going to do. I'm now going to do just four straight rounds of the cream. And then I'll be changing the colours afterwards. So I don't think we actually went, when I did the front board, I'm not quite sure. I don't think we actually had anywhere where we did two rows, two rounds of the same colour. So that's even easier to get started really. So anyway, I'll just show you, I'll take you through that now. So now we've got to the end, we are going to, as we were doing on border one, we're just going to join with a slip stitch in our first standing double crochet, remembering not to pull that slip stitch too tight. And we're going to pop our marker in there. So we're going to do that on every round. On the following rounds, your last stitch will always be worked into this marked slip stitch. And then you join again like we just did there. 
so now what we're going to do we had if you remember always had our turning chain so there's no need to pull up another color for this round because i'm doing it exactly the same color as the previous one so just do the turning chain and then we go straight into working into the back loop of our marked corner chain one double crochet one chain one double crochet so the only difference is if you wanted to change the color on the row rather than doing your turning chain straight away there with the same color as you were using before you would pull up your new color pull up a loop in the new color making sure you sort of remember what we did we pulled down like the, the color from the previous one nice and tight so you didn't have an extra loop then we did our turning chain in our new color and then got started so it's exactly the same idea so hopefully that makes some sense what I will do when I do change colour, I will just come back and run through that with you. So I've now just moved that marker up, so I've got my corner chain marked again. So now all we're going to do for all of these remaining eight rounds, whichever colour you're using, it's literally just going to be double crochets in the back loop of every stitch. So back loop double crochets all the way around, apart from those marked corner chains where you're going to be working into the back loop of that chain again one double crochet one chain one double crochet and remembering to move your marker up so simple as that so carry on like so and as i said i'll be back in a few more rounds when i get there to show you what you do when you want to change color again Right, so I've now got to the last stitch of the fourth round of my plain um, cream rounds that I was doing there. So I now want to add in my red. So to do that, as we've done before, well, before we do that, we've got to actually do the last stitch in our marked slip stitch from the previous round. So that will actually complete this round. There we go. And I'm going to take that out because I'm going to need to mark the slip stitch that I'm now about to make. So same as every round, slip stitch in there and pop that marker back into that slip stitch. So once we've done that, because I'm going to be using my cream again after a single round of the red, I'm going to leave that attached. And I'm just now going to pull that through, pull that one down nice and firm to hold it in. And now we're just going to basically do, so that's just that one extra little step between the slip stitch and our turning chain, which I've now done. Okay, keep that nice and tight. So now we're going to start, as always, with getting there. And I'm just going to work over the end of this, just for this first couple of stitches to hold it in before we um, weave it in at the end. So we've got our one double crochet, one chain. One double crochet into the back loop of that corner chain and move the marker up again so yeah now you can just carry on along get the right bit of yarn and again it's just going to be a load more back loop double crochets okay with the double crochet chain double crochet into the back loop of each marked corner chain so carry on as how, however you want, whether you're doing it all one colour or in your stripes, and I will see you when you've completed your nine row nine rounds of border two, and then we will um, join the two together. Right, so I've now finished border two with my my little stripey pattern there, and I just finished off with a invisible join again just like i did on um border one so now oh and obviously woven in all my little ends there. i've left them a little bit longer because they're going to be tucked in anyway but they're all nice and secure so nothing's going to come undone there okay so now we've obviously we've got two borders and we've got all the scuffy ends in between so obviously to finish it all off we've got to join the two together so to do that we're going to turn over onto oh, the right side and then you can just pick any corner you want to start with as i'm here i might as well start with this one and so what we're going to do we are going to start with a standing 
double crochet again and again because I am going all the way around I'm going to be joining up at the beginning I'm personally not going to add a slip knot I'm just going to twist that yarn around there okay we'll still be sort of weaving the end in leave that long enough so you can tidy it up at the end so what we've now got to do is we join up just into the back we're just working into the back loops again but we're going to pick up both borders so you can see where we've we've left the markers in those corner chains starting you can start in any corner you want so just getting the picked and picking up the stitch in that corner chain so there if you can see that that's the other oh if i can get hold of it that's the other half of that one okay so we've picked up that sort of inner loop it would have been the back loops as you're working it for both sides in a loop there one double crochet and then because it's a corner we're just going to work uh, where are we another one into there so you're just going to go all the way around picking up those inner loops of each border okay like so and working a double crochet through it so make sure you're on the right side because the stitches do look different on the back so I always think it looks neater to work from the right side it'll look just like all your other rows then okay so just go around like so in a loop in a loop double crochet get through all of the strands okay so it's just then like I said you should find as long as you haven't missed any stitches or gained any which you shouldn't do if you're just working into each stitch you should find you'll get exactly to the next marked corner for both borders at the same time and then when you do it's just a case of two double crochets in the corners in those corner chains and then just the one all the way along okay so this is how it's going to look on the front so we're just going to be framing our blanket with a, a line of our CC2 colour CC2? CC3 and then um, on the back you see the stitch just looks slightly different but that's going to how, how it'll be in mine yours will obviously depend on how you've done your stripes okay so carry on around like so and I will see you when you get back to the beginning again and we'll just um, do that invisible join and tidy up our ends together. Right, so I've now got all the way round my joining round and you can see how it just flattens everything out and makes it all lovely and sort of squishy and, and pretty. So I just want to now finish off as we did uh, when we did each of the individual borders. I'm just going to finish off with an another um, invisible join so just in case um, you can't remember how we did that before and also because I suppose it is a little different because we need to be extra neat when we're tidying things up I'm just going to run through that with you again so I've obviously taken my hook out of the loop what I'm now going to do I'm not actually going to properly fasten off as we did before just going to pull that out so we've just got that one strand of yarn sticking out of our last stitch there then thread it onto a tapestry needle what we've got to do as before we're going to basically be replacing this first loop here so we can pull that quite tight really and replace that with a new invisible a new loop that'll be invisible when we've done it so I'm now as you see I've just pulled that through you see pulled that through so not pulled it through that first stitch but actually under the top loops of the second stitch of the round and just pull it tight enough so it's the same length as all of the other loops then we insert our hook back into where the yarn came out and I usually try you can see there's that extra sort of loop on the back I put it down through that too pull it down and again pull it just tight enough there we go that that totally disappears and all you see is the loop so it looks exactly the same as the stitches on either side so now we just need to obviously take a little bit more care with weaving this in because whatever we do now on the back we're going to see so what I'll tend to do so I just put that down through that 
second stitch was actually right where my um, standing the first part of the yarn for my standing double crochet was there take it down into there and then so that bits disappeared then what we're going to do is just tuck under there weave about a bit like so keeping it within that same color that we're using Remembering not to pull anything too tight because we don't want to ruche anything up. Okay, so it's bouncing around there. Then just go back a bit. And now I'm going to just go through once more. And what you can do is just sort of stick it out there like so. Take the needle off and what I'm going to do you just pull it a little bit tighter as you cut quite close then we'll stretch it out again and that end has completely disappeared okay like so so just do the same with this one and then you'll be finished so we've got the front of the border and then the oh this is how I did my stripes. You also may well be different stripes or plain, whatever you wanted, but then just a nice plain sort of border on the back. So as you can see, it all lays lovely and flat and neat. Mm -hmm.